Hey everybody, thanks for joining me today. So today we are looking at a vintage Cornelli L embroidery machine. This um, machine I got a little while ago. I was very lucky to find this machine um, and that needed a little cleanup. And I have um, the restoration and cleanup of this machine in another video on my YouTube channel, Chain Stitch Embroidery. But today what I wanna do is I wanna talk about um, these 3D printed parts, which you see attached to the machine, and some of the original parts. And this machine is, is very, very similar to the Mauser machine, which you see here. The Mauser machine and the Cornelli L are very nearly the same, do the same functions. Um, and I have a review of the Mauser machine in other videos as well. Okay, so the Cornelli L machine here I have fitted um, some 3D printed parts that are a replica of the arm that I got this on the machine, this arm, and this thing attaches on the top, kind of like that. Um, this is a vintage part, and so my wonderful husband was able to uh, replicate 3D design this part um, in Rhino. And I was able to print this out on my um, 3D printer. This is using a PLA filament, which is not the most durable thing, but I think it'll work for this purpose because all it does is turn, turn a spool of thread like this. So the vintage one I'm just gonna set on the side and I'm gonna start talking about um, trying to do a stitch on this machine. And what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna try to use this yarn here, which is uh, like a fluffy caterpillar yarn and basically you can do some really cool projects like this where we have um, the chain stitch, the wrapping, and this thick yarn comes down from above off the spool. So I'm going to try to load up and show you how to do this type of work on this Cornelli L machine. So hang on and I will put you into the holder and we'll get started. So the first thing that we're going to do is start out with the basic chain stitch. Okay, so um, I have already threaded up my machine and I've got it going on the basic chain stitch. And what you're seeing, I know it's hard to see, but you do circles clockwise and counterclockwise to make sure your machine is working properly. Okay, um, I'll zoom you in real quick here. So I'm using yellow household sewing thread. So the yellow thread hopefully will not show when I get the colorful yarn in the machine. Um, that's my objective here. So I am using a vintage needle um, that I got in this machine. Sorry, uh, correction. I'm using a vintage nipple in this machine. This foot is a Mauser claw foot, which I sawed off and shortened to fit this machine. And then I'm also using a Mauser needle bar um, in the machine. This is a Mauser needle bar, which fits both machines. Um, not all parts are, you know, completely interchangeable. Some might need just a little bit of modification, but many of the Mauser parts can fit on this machine, including the looper, the looper block, um, the handle, stuff like that can all be swapped out onto this machine. Um, from Mauser. So anyway, but, but this, this Cornelli L is mostly vintage with the exception now of my 3D printed parts. The claw foot here, it came with this um, rubber foot and I don't, I just don't really like the rubber feet. So um, I did put a new rubber gasket thing, uh, foot, foot on it, sole, whatever. Um, so now back to this, I'm sorry, I'm rambling. So we, we're in this phase now. So the next thing to do is introduce the wrapping thread. So I will be using um, a spool of household sewing thread in yellow that I have cut off the tops and bottoms. If you watch my other videos, I mentioned this. This is 125 yard Coates and Clark thread. So I'm gonna skip some of the steps of how to install these pieces because they are on my other video that I did showing the use of the Mauser machine. So the full video on how to attach these bits around the needle are, are in the other video. So I'm not gonna go into that. Oh, this 
This is the original vintage part and I had to fiddle with a little bit. So I'm gonna have my thread feed off the outside of this roll and you just test it. Um, I'm not sure this one, it, it's as found. So it's it needed a little bit of massaging um, to get the tension right. I had to put this uh, spacer in because the tension was too tight for this larger spool. Uh, it probably would have worked with the standard small spool, but I prefer to kind of try to use the sewing thread so you don't have to rewind your stuff onto the smaller spools. So what I'm doing now is I put that into the holder and I'm feeding it through the, the arm and the bottom. I'm gonna take my tweezers and get that down to the bottom of the foot. Um, these long tweezers come in handy to get your uh, sorry, to get your threads going in the right directions. Okay, got it. So I'm just going to pull that around. And I was chaining. I didn't stop chaining. So I'm just going to hold the thread tail from the top. And what we're going to do now is just test, test the tension in the wrapping thread. Um, okay, so first problem. <laughs> um, I don't know if you can see that. This is why we start off slow. Um, my wrapping thread is totally wrapping around my nipple and not down below. So uh, what happened was I was changing the nipple. You have to take, at least for now, I have to take the needle plate off. I have to take the foot off so I can get the needle out of the, sorry, the nipple out of the nipple carrier. And I, this arm, this thread guide here, um, I moved it up so that I could get the needle plate out and I forgot to put it back down. Okay, so that's mistake number one here today. All right, so hang on, I'm gonna pause you and get this off and restart. Okay, so I unwrapped my thread from the nipple. Sorry, I'm trying to focus here real quick. So then I'm gonna take the thread tail pass it through to the bottom. Okay, now we'll start sewing and we'll see what happens. See if we get good wrapping or, oh my gosh, it's still going around the nipple. Okay, at least I didn't go so many times this time. All right, so I'm gonna pause you guys and I guess I have to lower the arm. Well, I'll, I'll just do it now. If you guys think my videos are too long, I'm sorry, but it definitely takes you know, a long time to learn and do these machines. It does not happen overnight. So um, if you think my videos are too long, you're probably not going to um, have the patience to even do this. I'm looking at this. I might move this over to the other hole over here because it's dragging across the machine right now, but I don't know that that will matter for our purpose of just demonstrating. So I'm going to grab that with the tweezers and pull that to the bottom. Now I'm going to watch and see the thread coming out of the bottom of the arm. If it goes around the top of the nipple or below. Okay. Now it's going below. Okay. So I lowered that little thread guide enough now that it's working. Okay. So now I'm getting wrapping. Um, so and I'm sorry, it's kind of awkward because the phone is where my face would normally be. Okay, so the wrapping is way too loose. And I know that when I'm going to do this thick yarn, I want the wrapping to be pretty tight. So I have to screw this, I think, down, up, down, down. I have to make the arm go up, but I'm not sure what direction the, the screw goes. I think that might have done it. This... Screw here is very sensitive. Okay. So it does in fact look like my wrapping got tighter. I'm really sorry guys, I chose yellow thread and it's, it's hard to see, but hold on, I'll stop and show you. Okay. So if you can see that, I started out over here doing just a regular chain stitch with only the one thread from below. 
Okay. And I verified that that was working. And then I came over to here where we tried to introduce the, the second thread here, which is wrapping from above, jammed around the nipple, started again. And then we started going again. And here you can see the chain is in there, but the wrapping thread is very loose. So I tightened the tension on the wrapping thread and now I have this kind of configuration going. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now I'm going to introduce the fat thread from down below. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see this. I'll try not to put my head in front of the camera. This is my threading wire for this machine. This machine, I have it now pointing with the nose forward. There's like a, I don't know, a shoulder or something in here that when you try to feed this down, it's not that easy. So what I'm gonna do, I have a piece of regular sewing thread that I put a big loop in the end, and I'm gonna put that onto the fork of my threading wire. So I have that attached to my threading wire, and I'm gonna hold the thread in my one hand and put the threading wire down the needle bar with the other hand, making sure that the thread doesn't come off the fork. And then when I get down to the bottom, I'm gonna kind of futz around. Oh, I got it the first time. So let me zoom in and I'll show you what, what I did. Here, okay. So you can see that, sorry about the bad camera work. Okay, so you can see that the, the threading wire came out Oh, sorry. And the loop came out. So I'm going to grab the thread and I'm going to pull the threading wire out. And I'm going to pull the thread down. So there's a loop in this end and a loop in that end. I've, at least once, I will pull this back up through the top or down from the bottom. So I'm going to put my tweezers on this loop here and just sit that there so that I don't pull it out back up the top. You can see how easy that is to do. Okay. So now I'm going to go back up to the top. Sorry about this, guys. I need a camera man to operate the video. Okay, so now I have this 3D printed part, which goes on top, and this gear hits that gear, and then this, this whole thing rotates with the thread on top. So, but you have to thread it through the hole and down the needle bar. So I have found it's kind of easier to do it sort of not, not attached. So what I'm gonna do, sorry. What, what I'm gonna do, this is my fancy barbecue skewer with um, hot glue gun ends. I'm gonna put this onto my spool holder and go through the other side. All right, come on, come on out. Okay, go through the other side. My barbecue skewer. I'm gonna take my little. I made. I made a little glue nubbin on a metal drill bit that fits. Okay, so then the end of the thread has to go down through here. So I'll put it down there. Then I'm gonna sit this down. And I'm gonna take this and the loop and I'm gonna make a, a loop with that and I'm gonna attach it to the end of this thick yarn. Okay, so I went through this and now I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna pull the end at the bottom and this thing should come out the bottom. Okay, and I will put this on top Roll it up, and then I just drop this over top of the needle bar, put it down carefully so that it drops down in and has the gears. And if you're wondering what this is here, this is a little piece of silicone placemat. I am using a number two needle, so I have two holes. You can't, you can't write on silicone. So I punch two holes like dominoes, so I know that this is a number two needle. So um, one of the things is that in the old days, 
when people did this kind of stuff, they generally used very small needles, number two or number three, and very thin thread. So um, most of the vintage Cornelli nipples you're gonna find are really gonna be for like a two or three needle at the most. So now I have my spool in the holder, which is um, spinning with the gears here, here, and the handle under the table. And now I'm gonna zoom you in down here. So this, I'll show you that in a little bit, but um, so we'll zoom you in over here so you can see what's going on here. Sorry, I have like this springy arm. So now I have to get my thread down through the nipple. And you have to pick like the right size nipple to use. So I'm still gonna take the end of my string and I'm gonna try to feed that through um, the big nipple. This is where the tweezers come in handy. So I'm gonna pull this whole thing through without making a knot. Okay, and hopefully it will pull my Oh, I don't think it will actually. I don't think the the caterpillar thread doubled up may not go through that. Or maybe it will. Okay, it does. Okay, so I'm pulling my caterpillar thread through. Good to go. And I'm just gonna cut this off, pull my yarn out of my loop, and save this for later. I have found that using this thin little piece of thread just kind of helps because um, when you're trying to feed the big fat thing down it sometimes is difficult to get the threading wire to come out. So I'm going to put this on the side for the next time. Okay, so now we've got the furry caterpillar stuff coming out the top, down from the top. I'm going to lift my foot up and I'm going to get this underneath the foot. Okay. Come on. This stuff's fun. Okay, so this yarn, you can get it like any craft store in lots of different colors. And it's really fun. Um, and it's easy. And when um, you use the sewing thread, it's super easy because then you don't see the thread. And you can just write people's names and do all kinds of fun stuff. So this is what I really like this machine for. Um, it can do taping too, but um, this stuff is fun. So I just did the hand roll by hand a couple times, see what's going on. One of the problems you can have is the little thread guide down here, if it's not high enough, it's going to um, drag across your whatever this is called that comes down from the top. And so I'm looking at it right now just to see like how high up the nipple is it. It's pretty high up. So we're going to try it like that because otherwise it's going to wrap above the nipple. Okay, so we'll try to start sewing and we'll see what we get. Um, I think I have this machine on the longest stitch as well. So it's working. Yay! So this process that I just went through, it is exactly the same on the Mausner machine, basically they're identical. So now the chain stitch is coming up from the bottom, which is a yellow, uh, like household all purpose sewing thread. And the yellow thread on the spool here is wrapping around and it's attaching my rainbow caterpillar stuff. And um, I just love this, it, it is fantastic for like a really fast, cool result. Um, okay, so we have some troubleshooting I see here. Okay, so what we see here, let me get the light on this. I am seeing my chain stitch is up here. That is not right. Your chain stitch is supposed to be on the bottom, on the bottom of this thing, like hidden. Um, so I'm gonna tighten my chain stitch, but at least the machine is working. So I'm gonna reach under my table and I'm gonna give one full revolution to my lower thread making the chain. Now we'll go a little more. 
you got to go like a little while for that tension adjustment to show up as it goes like through the thread. So um, I don't, me personally, I don't really care to see the wrapping thread. So I try to choose a thread that's you know close to my color of my yarn. However, um, if you put this through the wash, that thread will like almost completely disappear, um, and you won't see it because the laundry makes the thread fluff up. Okay, so I'm going to turn around and we'll examine where we just came from. So I'm going to hopefully I'm sorry if I didn't have you guys in focus. So let's see. Looks like I could make my wrapping thread a little tighter, but I think now um, the chain stitch is underneath. So I'm gonna, and I don't like to do this. I, this thing is wanky and it goes one way up and one way down. I can never figure it out, but you only need to turn it like a half a turn at the most. So I'm gonna try to go down. No, that doesn't look right. I'm gonna try to go the other way. Up. Maybe, I don't know. No, I think that's wrong. Okay, I'm gonna go back to where it was and back another turn. We'll know soon enough if that made a change. And you could pull that, but then I'll have to kind of rewind. I mean, I guess I could have pulled the thread from the top. Okay, so now we'll do a few more loops. So when I'm doing this like testing, I always do clockwise and counterclockwise uh, circles. Okay. So I just came from over here. Looks like my chain stitch is still on top, and it looks like I could tighten this. But if you kind of rub on it a little bit, that yellow will disappear. I definitely need to tighten the the yellow. Um, Definitely need to tighten this yellow spool here. So I'm going to try to look really hard and see which direction it's going. I think that's looser. Okay, I'm going to go tighter. All right, let's see. So the other thing you can do is um, you can grab it here and you can pull on it. And you can, oh, that's, that's tight. That is really tight. Um, and wrap it back up. Well, let's see. Let's see what happens. Okay, so I'm going to keep going. Nothing's broke yet, so that's a good sign. Well, my foot, I, this claw foot, I need to smooth it out a little bit. Okay, so getting bunching, that's telling me that that is too tight. So loosen this back where it was. Okay. Oh my gosh. Okay. What's going on? Yikes. Okay. So it didn't like that. Something is stuck. Oh my goodness. So I got to get this unstuck. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of pull here above the nipple, get some of this down from the top. So that's not the problem. I'm going to poke my head under the table and see what is going on under here. It's not that. So it has to be this wrapping thread. Oh, that is tight like a mofo. Okay. So that's my problem. This is too tight. So, so I'm gonna turn that. This is like on a threaded rod, so when you rotate it this way, like the thing comes down. It's just it's a little confusing. Ah, see, okay, it released. Just released because I loosened this tension. I know you all think this is funny, and, and I kind of enjoy some of the troubleshooting, but not all of it sometimes. Um, but you have to do this to, to get going and figure out, you know, what what the heck you're doing here. All right. So I'm going to go back to here. Oh, that is like super tight. That, so that's not going to work. 
I'm going to screw this up a little bit. What? Okay, I think I'm going the wrong direction, to be honest. I'm going to screw this down. Okay, 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 now it's looser. Okay, so put that back. You know, um, I like the vintage machines, I do, but this kind of like, I don't really feel like I get this much fiddling around on the Mauser machine. And, and to be honest, um, I, I purchased this from Mauser. I asked Abdul to send it to me with no holes and it's, um, it's pretty much identical, but this, um, it just is a little nicer. And this one, I could tell it was missing this guide on the end. So I bought this. This is a very reasonably priced part from Mauser. And I'm going to punch some holes in it and I'm going to put this on because I think that this nut will be a little more adjustable for these larger spools. So that'll solve that problem. Um, but I know that I could get a vintage one of these somewhere else also. I just wanted the more reasonably priced one. So, okay, so I'm going to go on. We'll see. Are we moving? Is my foot down? My foot is down. Um, need to get out of that thing, that knot I made. Okay, so we'll keep going. So you can see that um, this tension thing is like a hair trigger. Um, hey, I think we're, we're doing better now. Let's go over here where um, I don't have as much stuff. Going over all this other stuff, you gotta, my, my claw foot I need to fine tune with 400 grit. Okay, so we'll go over here. We'll make some circles. Ah! Okay, what's going on? Okay, pulling out my thread. What's going on? I probably should have used um, more stabilizer. Okay, I'm stuck again. I just push that down. <laughs> okay. All right. I think I'm still. St I'm think. I think the chain stitch needle is stuck on the yarn. So I'm gonna try to just walk it out of here. This is a fun video, y'all. Oh my goodness. Okay. I'm not anybody watching, you know what what this is? Tell me cuz I don't know. It's like something got jammed up and didn't release. So I'm thinking that it's like the Okay, needle down, needle up. Foot is up. Okay, got it out. Okay, check our threads. Check underneath. Thread's still going. Okay. Turn by hand. Not happy. Not happy. Gosh, we were going good there for a little while. All right, so when you want to stop with the yarn, you, you know the needle's in there, so you have to pull it, like, to the side. It is a possibility that my needle wasn't adjusted properly. So I'm gonna pull it out. I'm just gonna cut this. This is the fun yarn and the thing below. I'm gonna reach in here and grab, this is my chain stitch thread. I think maybe my chain stitch thread is too tight. 
fine balance between all these threads. And that's the, the fun part, I guess. So it looks like my chain stitch thread may be too tight. It was pretty tight when I started, and I, I know I tightened it more. But um, maybe that wasn't a good idea. So you have to play with it. Um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cheat. And I'm going to use two layers of this um, cut away stabilizer, which is kind of for t-shirts. But as you can see, we're going along pretty good. It looks pretty good right here. Um, sorry, I bumped the, the camera. Try to focus a little bit. So it looks pretty good here. And if this goes through the wash, all the fluffy stuff will come out through the um, threads and you won't see it. So I'm going to start again. Make sure everything is clear. This is my stuff from the top. This is my stuff from below. This is my stuff on the spool. And that is like, that is really tight. I think that's part of our problem. Um, so I'm going to loosen it, which I think is that way. No, I could be wrong. Okay, yes, that loosened it. I'm going to... So I'm pulling on the end and seeing how tight this wool is. You can see it, it rotating. So it's pretty tight. Okay, so up is tighter and down is looser. Okay, so I'm kind of feeling the tension. It's pretty tight. Okay, let's try that. Okay, that and two pieces of um, cutaway stabilizer. Okay, turning the wheel by hand, making sure nothing is getting stuck. Of course, I'm coming towards me. Okay. Zoom you guys in a little bit. Sorry. You know, I just try to help you guys, help you guys learn um, how to do this. I am definitely not a professional chain stitch person or video person. So we're going pretty good now. I mean, I know this is an art, and I know there's lots and lots of things you can do with these machines. I'm discovering, you know, learning myself, and um, trying to share with everybody, because a couple of years ago when I got my Rusty, my first machine, there was no information at all available on the internet about any of these machines, and it was so hard. And they're so much fun. I never thought I would be here today making videos with, I don't know how many machines. Um, but I just want to share with you all so you can learn and, and try to inspire you guys that you need to think outside the box, test things, try to figure out what, what's going on, you know. Um, so I can see from this that my thread on this guy is not, it's too loose. So down was, unscrewing was down, and so, what did I say? I can't remember. I'm gonna go a quarter turn. <laughs> so, when I say that you really should know how to chain stitch, you have to have your chain stitch fine-tuned and, and going really well um, before you start to add in the other threads. And that's why I say you really need to know how to chain stitch before you try to add in the other threads. I hope you guys can understand that. Um, 
this machine just has a lot more happening. You really need to understand oil maintenance and taking care of your machine so that you can get the most out of it, how to fine tune your machine, um, stuff like that. So hopefully this helps you guys to understand how to do this kind of stuff. And I just sort of rub across it to hide the thread. Um, but that is, that is the furry caterpillar. And if you wash this, the threads will really hide. Um, let me show you my pillow. So like in this pillow, this has been through the wash um, one time. And you can see you can't, you can kind of see it, but you really can't see the, the threads. I mean, you can if you look for it, but, but really um, people can't tell how this got made. I think it's really cool. So, um, that is my stitch demo here. This is really not good looking. I mean, you shouldn't see any threads. The chain stitch should be hidden on the bottom of the thread and the wrapping should be hidden in the furry stuff. I like this, um, furry, uh, yarn because just because of that reason that it hides the wrapping thread in, in the flocking. Um, you can use any kind of yarn though, just as long as it fits through your nipple. So you can see that is my nipple right there and you can see the yarn coming down through it. So you can use just any kind of yarn. Um, I got lots of different size nipples for this and uh, that is the, sorry, that is the Cornelli L machine. You can see I was using my um, 3D printed parts up top here. So the, the handle under the table, which rotates, is attached to the yellow spool and the thing on top. And my 3D printing parts are working great. So that is the vintage Cornelli L machine, and that is how to do fun stuff. Okay, thanks for watching, guys.